Good morning, everybody, and happy Thursday, and happy New Year's Eve. Today is the last day of 2020, and I know that a lot of us are very excited to see it go. Uh, so again, I am very much like you, uh, and I am excited to put this one to bed, um, but I pray that today would be a good day of reflection and being able to see the Lord's goodness and how he has been with you in this last year, as well as how he will be with you in the next. So for those of you who are just tuning in, my name is Lindsay Fundick, and I am the coordinator of volunteer ministries at Ashland First United Methodist Church. And every Thursday, I hop on here to share a little bit about what the Lord is teaching me and my devotional thoughts for this week. So welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, and today I've been reflecting a little bit about uh, going into the new year, kind of the things that come to mind. And I've been thinking about loaded words. So a loaded word elicits strong reactions one way or another. So think of things like fundamentalism, patriotism, veganism, lots of isms, um, these things that you know, kind of can can cause either controversy or passionate discussions, um, these things that sort of raise your heart rate a little bit. And one of those things has, for me, has been the word discipline. So it might not be fair, but in my mind, when I hear discipline, it is either imaginary gym rats and dietitians telling me that I need to get my act together, or um, parents who are a little bit too zealous in disciplining their children. Uh, I think about um, how the phrase, God disciplines those he loves, has been misused to kind of justify things that happen because of a sinful world. Um, and I just read a book in which uh, the husband disciplines his wife and my little feminist heart couldn't take it. So there are a lot of reactions, a lot of feelings I feel when I hear the word discipline. But the Lord in the past few years have been has been kind of reorienting my view of the word discipline. So I've begun to think about it dif differently. And the long and short of it is that discipline has a place in the spiritual life. It always has. Uh, the Israelites had the Mosaic Law that they sought to adhere. Um, the early church met to met regularly to hear letters of encouragement read aloud. The desert mothers and fathers were treated into a monastic life so as to have the discipline to connect with God. Um, and today it looks differently. It looks like, you know, church services, but also small groups and, uh, you know, coffee dates and sitting with your Bible and your journal and having quiet time. So this sort of idea of discipline in the spiritual life takes a lot of different forms. And I'm a huge advocate for this idea that it doesn't have to look one certain way. So let that be the caveat. If you connect best by hiking through the woods and praying, you go do it. If you connect best by cuddling up with, you know, hot chocolate in bed and talking to Jesus, go do it. Um, so this is not to advocate for one type of discipline over another. But this idea of discipline has come back to the forefront of my mind recently as I have been going through uh, the book, The Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster with uh, Lydia, whom I mentor. Uh, and this book has come in and out of my life quite a bit since going to seminary, uh, and it's nice to enter into it with fresh eyes and to do so with her. But there is a quote from the introduction that sticks with me. I think it encapsulates Foster's kind of view of things. Uh, God has given us the disciplines of the spiritual life as a means of receiving his grace. The disciplines allow us to place ourselves before God so that he can transform us. So if you're anything like me, the idea of discipline is miserable because it thinks it makes me think of lack of freedom and too much structure and uh, having to grit my teeth in order to get the result. And I think sometimes those things, uh, sometimes we have to grit our teeth. Uh, but I really like the way that Foster has framed this because it's less about our own effort and more about just having the rhythms that place us before God so that he might transform us as opposed to us you know, fighting for the results. It's kind of like creating these conditions. So if I had my druthers, I would eat cake for every meal and mozzarella sticks for every snack. And I would drink Diet Coke out of a fountain. And 
Obviously, those are not all great choices. <laughs> if I did them on a prolonged scale, I probably would not be long for this world. Um, but there is something to be said for, okay, rather than cold turkey, maybe I have one Diet Coke a week, or um, maybe I make sure I have more fruit than cookies that I can grab when I'm in my house. So these kind of, these disciplines can be gentle and these dis disciplines can be about creating the space for growth and creating the conditions for growth and for connection. And I think that those things, as we approach the new year, uh, discipline comes to the head quite a bit because everyone has really good intentions. Like I'm going to go to the gym five times a week. It's going to be amazing. Um, but we can be more gentle with ourselves and position ourselves for success, uh, and especially when it comes to the spiritual life. So it's good to have goals, um, but those New Year's resolutions that you set need not be insane. They need not all rest on your effort. Just put yourself in the right position for God to use and transform you. So when it comes to, if you want to pray more, Maybe set an alarm 15 minutes a day for you to just sit quietly with the Lord. You need not, you know, have hours and hours of prayer time, at least in the beginning. If you can, more power to you. Um, but if you have that discipline, just set that condition. I'm going to sit quietly and see what the Lord says. Uh, same goes with being in the Word. Show up for one chapter a day. Um, or go through uh, Pastor Allen's Reading the Bible in a Year uh, program that we're doing. He'll have a video every day. So that could be a discipline that you have. It, it need not be something intense, just something gentle. You, you work yourself into it. Um, you need not be Mother Teresa to have the rhythm, the discipline to serve the least, to have something that is uh, at the forefront of your mind, a lens through which you view the world. So I think that when it comes to discipline, it need not be loaded and scary. Uh, Foster, like I said, is a really big proponent for this is the transformation that God is doing in us. So I can set myself up well to have more fruit than cookies in the house, but I can also prayerfully take my relationship with food to the Lord. Um, he can work with these things. He can work with our small steps. So as we go into the new year, be kind to yourself. And the point is this, is that discipline is about putting yourself gently in the right position for God to do his work. Yes, we have to show up. Yes, there are things that are required of us. Um, and these need not, these are more of a, think of them as a framework as opposed to these like hard and fast rules because we know that when we set unrealistic goals, when we say we're going to be at the gym for four hours a day, you're going to not do that. <laughs> um, and most of us, maybe, maybe that's your thing. But um, my prayer is that we would be able to sit ourselves quietly before the Lord to show up to trust him for transformation and just slowly and gently cultivate a, have the discipline to cultivate our surroundings so that we can grow, so that we can be planted, so that we can improve in all facets of our life. And the Lord cares about all facets of our life as well. So I am praying for all of us as we go into the new year, um, that we would understand that we would understand the Lord's grace through these disciplines, that it need not be something that we force ourselves into. It need not be something that is a loaded word. I know that that's being transformed for me. Um, and as you move into 2021, be gentle with yourself, but position yourself well so that you can uh, be where you want to be so that the Lord can gently move you into a new, healthier, um, more healed whole space Um as we become, quote unquote, the best versions of ourselves, the Lord is the one who helps us do that. And all we need to do is show up and surrender. So friends, I pray that tonight you are um, celebratory, that you are reflecting today on 2020, um, because God has been good to us. And um, as we go into 2021, I pray that we would all be disciplined, that we all would show up, um, but ultimately that we would understand and know the Lord's grace and love for us as we move into the next year. So with that, First United Methodist, as always, I love you. I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you. And I will see you on the other side. Have a great, safe, fun evening.